Hello, 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 and welcome back to Believe in Lions. Took a couple weeks off with the Super Bowl, just had some time to recharge the batteries, and we are back, of course, with the one, the only, the interception leader, the all-pro, the Detroit Lions all-star, the all-star framer of jerseys, of boots, of belts, Glover Quinn. <laughs> I like how you improv that, man. That's so cool. I appreciate it, man. What is up? Not too much. Had a little bit of a vacation. Went down to Jamaica. Got some sun. You probably can't tell, but uh, getting some sun is just so good. That February monotony, even though it gets a Super Bowl and it's great, but you just you need that sunlight. Oh, you got to have it, man. I love the sunlight. There's nothing, there's nothing better than the sun like brightening in your mood and it's so crazy how that works right when it's sunny outside you just feel happier and you just want to do something and just when it's cloudy and gloomy it's just like uh you feel so much lazier and you just want to go to sleep so i love the sun man I, the, the back of my house is all windows and the back of my house is the east side so in the morning time the sun is in the back of my house so it's shining really 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 bright throughout the house so i walk through the house and it's just like i don't even have to cut lights on all day because it's just so bright and i just sit on the couch and just let the sun hit me on the back of the neck and it just feels awesome man it really does i love the sun it, it's just so nice you all, you literally feel like a flower when you you first step there and you're just sitting there bathing in it just absorbing it all and it's so nice and so with the nfl season being over how did you kind of end your season whenever your season would wrap up how would you recharge get that sunlight just what was oh man it was uh it was is that it actually changed over the course of my years like when i was younger you know when the season would be over with it was like binge whatever for the next month and a half so food like i like when i was young i used to gain 10 to 15 pounds like in the in the off season, and then I had to like work hard to like lose all that weight. Um, but I've had kids and stuff my whole career, so um, we didn't. I didn't really go on many just like trips. I would take on a trip every now and then, went um, different places, but I, I wasn't really just. Uh, I need to go somewhere and recharge. It was just kind of like, all right, now I don't have to go to work, so now I can be home. Relax at the house, get stuff done, help out here, there, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then as I got older, I was living, I was playing in Detroit and, you know, we were still living in Houston. So then I was going back and forth. And so then once the season was over with, now it's like, all right, man, I finally get to come back home to my house. So I was kind of like, man, I'm just happy to be home. I'm out of Detroit. It's cold up there. But it was just like that was work, and now I get to come home and just relax and be home and be around my kids and stuff like that. So um, that's really kind of how I, I uh, wound down. And then I used to always use the off season for, like, my hobbies and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I didn't really get into a lot of that stuff while I was playing. Like, while I was playing, I was, like, locked in for during the season, you know, my eating and, you know, all that type of stuff. And so once the off season came, then it was like, all right, now I can breathe for a little bit. Um, and then the older I got, the the less room I had to uh, breathe in the off season because just had to keep the body up, and it gets harder to you know stay at a certain level. So you can't lose much in the off season. So it became more like, all right, you come home, and now it's like, all right, you take a couple of weeks, and now it's back to working out, and just you know what I'm saying. Um, but I never, I never was like just a big. You know, I'm going to go on vacation for two or three weeks because, I mean, I had kids. So kids are in school. Like, I can't just leave and go on vacation. So, um, but I used to just love just not having to go to work for a couple of days. It's kind of nice that you can turn home into a vacation. You you get home and being home is your vacation. There's something beautiful about that, really. Oh, my gosh. It was awesome. Like, I used to be, I, I used to couldn't wait to just, get back home because like when I was in Detroit I lived in like a little apartment and then I had like an Airbnb and so just to be able to get home to like your house was just like oh man it was a long six months but I'm home it felt great 
Football is back and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, hockey, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B-L-E-A-V. Bet online where the game starts. And it's crazy that it's only six months. It feels so long when you're in it. And it, it, especially December, even from the media side, that's when it starts to drag almost. You're you're in the thick of it. And we got that little boost with the Lions almost playoff run. But it's just, it's so nice to have some time to breathe, to take everything in, to, and to look back at what you've accomplished over the past season. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, the season, like I said, it's long, man. Everybody's excited, you know, after the draft, you know, going into OTAs and stuff like that. You're excited. Players are excited to get back out a little bit and start working. And then you go through that process, and then you have the summer, and now you're building up, ramping up into, you know, training camp. And you get the training camp, and everybody's excited. The media is excited because now they know, whew, we're going to have something to cover for the next six months. Every day we're going to have something to cover for the next six months. So the fo- football media is excited. The world is excited. Everybody's thinking that their team is going to be a Super Bowl contender. You know, the optimism is high. Everybody is, is on cloud nine in July and August. And then September hits and it's the opening day. And everybody's super excited, man. Like, and then all of a sudden, like you say, November starts to hit. And now you start getting to like dog day, especially if your team isn't playing well or, you know, you're just treading water, trying to stay above the water. You know what I'm saying? And then you get to December. And if you're out of the race, it's just like, oh, my gosh, I can't I can't stand watching these guys play every weekend. But if you're in the race, you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm, you know what I'm saying? And it's the same way as a player, you know what I'm saying? If you're out of the race by – that's why I was saying last year, like the Lions had to really get it together because it gets really cold in Detroit in, you know, November, December, especially when you're out of the race, right? So they came back off of that bye week, and all of a sudden they started putting strings some games, some wins and stuff together, and you start seeing, hey, we're still in the race. So now you have something that keeps you warm. Otherwise, it gets really cold when you're losing. You know you're not going to playoffs. You're already thinking about getting out of there because it's cold. Like, I don't want to be here. I'm already thinking about vacation, where I'm going. So you're just kind of going through the motions as a player. And it's the same way I think for fans. You're just tuning in just to get your feelings hurt every week and be upset so you can go to social media and go off on the play. You know what I'm saying? And so when the season is over with and, you know, you had a decent season or whatever – to be able to just look back on that and just be like, wow, man, like we went through some stuff, man, but it was fun. Like we did this. I did this. I had this game. I made these plays like, uh, you know, it's a great feeling. I look back and I picked off Tom Brady. I picked off Drew Brees. I picked off Matt Ryan, you know, yeah. just <laughs> you finally get because I imagine as cool as it is picking those guys off in the moment it's business you're on to the next thing you don't get to revel in it and now you get to take in a second and just look at the interception ball that you got hey tom brady threw that to me yeah man i, I like i used to have all of them up in my office and i took them all down because i wanted to put up more like pictures and stuff and i only got three of them up now i think i got the the drew Brees um from 2014 saints I got tech too. I got oh man, I got another Drew Brees up too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I got two Drew Breezes up, and then I got uh who was that? Peyton Manning. That's a good one. I got Peyton Manning up. 
And I got Matt Ryan. So I got four. Yeah. I got four of them up right now. Two Drew Brees. I probably need to switch out one of those Drew Brees and put Tom Brady up there. Might not be a bad idea. But see, I got that Drew Brees right there to go with the picture. Ah. See, it's cool. I got this webcam. I can move it and actually show you guys. Ooh, that's beautiful. See, I got the picture. So I got the ball underneath it. All that's right. That's beautiful. And then it's crazy that we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, that's the Saints ball that was the 2014. It's kind of getting a little blurry. Um, and then you can see like another ball, college jersey, and that's another ball back there. But couple couple good balls from a couple good quarterbacks that you picked off. Yeah, and I probably can, I probably can find a space somewhere in the house. But I got to keep it in my office because my kids will take the balls off the thing. Start um, throwing it around. Yeah, they be playing around. Like <laughs> I think one of my kids got a. Uh, um, might be a, might be my JJ Watt sign football up in his room on the dresser. And I'm just like, where'd you get that from, bro? Uh, <laughs> no, nah, that's JJ. That's JJ right there. It must be Arian Foster, one of them. Sue or somebody's up there. Um, but yeah, man, it's just cool, man, to uh, to sit back on the and and you know think about the things that you did. And one of the things I used to always tell players is man the hardest thing to do in the nfl is to do it again man it doesn't matter you know what i'm saying you lead the league in interception it's hard to do it again you lead the league in rushing it's hard to do it again you go out and have a 200 yard receiving day it's hard to come back and do it again not saying that you can't do it it's just hard and so when you go into the off season you think about your season that you had whether it was good or bad right it's hard to do that again if you had a bad season like, don't go back and have another bad season. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're reflecting on what went wrong, why it went wrong, and how can I make it better? And if you had a good season, you're reflecting on what went right, why it went right, and how can I repeat that and do it again and get better? So that's kind of how you should be spending the first couple of weeks of your offseason, really reflecting on the the season that you had and things that you want to do different, things that you want to take to the next level and things that you want to try to keep the same and and, and, and slowly improve on. And the, even the negative lessons that you learned, because I remember we talked that the Lions sure learned a lesson against Carolina because it was ahead of Christmas. They probably got a little bit complacent, a little bit apathetic because it's it's the holidays and it's Carolina. How do we avoid that next year? What do we do next Christmas to avoid that letdown? And on the opposite end, how do we go into Green Bay again and stomp them? So it's. It's really something that doesn't get highlighted enough is what players do in the offseason, how they re regroup, how they rebuild and what actually it all because it all starts now. Right. It all your preparation for your season starts now ish. Maybe it starts next week, but it's, it all comes back to what you're doing when you have time to yourself. Right. Right. And, 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 you know, that, and that's from a player standpoint, you know, from a team standpoint, they're doing the same thing. And, you know, and they have a bunch of people working for them and all the analytics analysts and people inside the building, but they're, they're evaluating all those things, right? Like you talk about, okay, they're looking at, Hey, how many games did we lose, you know, by one score? Let's see if we can find a reason, like what was a common trend in those games like what was the common trend in the games that we won what was the common trend on our home games did we start fast in all our home games did we finish strong in our home games did we start slow on our way games did we finish fast like they looking at all those different things and those are things that they want to correct as well because now they can go into the offseason saying hey man when we're at home we start out really fast but then we go through a lull in the second quarter and third quarter, and then we finish really strong. So how can we avoid that lull? Is there something that we need to do in practice towards the middle of practice to make sure that we're not going into a lull two hours into our session, right? Because we, we start out practice really good. We finish practice good, but that middle part of practice is kind of blah. 
right? Well, then our games look the same exact way, right? Or, hey, we go on the road and it's like we can't take off until the third quarter. It's like the first half we're just asleep and then the second half we kind of take off and sometimes we've dug ourselves in too big of a hole and that's why we're not winning as much on the road. So they're looking at all these different things. Like, how do we perform in two minutes offensively, defensively? You know, what did our opening drives look like? You know, did we start the game in the right way offensively, defensively? What is something that we could have got better at? Did we have, you know, penalties and things like that that killed these drives that we really need to focus on? So those are a lot of things that they're looking at as a team to evaluate themselves to see, how can we get better and how can we practice these things to make sure that we're focusing on those things? Because, yeah, it's a lot of things that go on throughout the course of a season. But we can look back at last season and say these were some of the concrete things that popped up week in and week out that helped us win or helped us lose. And players should be doing the same exact thing, right? far as, man, my performance was this on away games, but I felt like this on home games. Why did I feel different in these games? And why did I feel, okay, what was my preparation like throughout the week? Did I did I take care of my body? Did I eat well? Did I I wasn't hydrated this week and I, my body felt like this. I felt good this week, but I, I got my massages. So you got to do all those different evaluations to make sure that you're giving yourself the best chance to be successful in the offseason and know how do you need to train. What is something you need to train for? Like, man, about by, by week eight, my body just started breaking down and I just couldn't stay healthy after week eight. So you need to do more training so that your body can last longer than eight weeks during the season, right? So there's a lot of things like that that need to go on in, in the early part of the offseason so you know how to attack the offseason from a team standpoint and from a player standpoint. And I know that was a lot of information, Jack, but that's just a couple of gems. There's a lot of information, but it's a lot of good information. And it's a lot of stuff that really puts it all together. And talk about evaluation. And it's nice to see after the evaluation is done by teams, guys get rewarded sometimes. Guys get rewarded with more years on their deal. They get rewarded with extra pay. Something we saw from both Lions coordinators. They We already know that they extended Ben Johnson when he turned down head coaching jobs. But Aaron Glenn... Last night, he and the Lions agreed to a multi-year contract extension with a pay raise. We don't know the details of that. It hasn't officially been announced yet. But I love the fact that both Lions coordinators, they have a winning season and they get rewarded for it. The Lions are throwing money out there to say, hey, we are happy with what happened. Let's keep going. Yeah, I like it too. I mean, you know, everybody wants to be a head coach at some point, but then maybe again, everybody really don't want to be a head coach. They just have to, I don't know, take the interviews. Um, but, you know, you want to be somewhere where, where where you want it for one. You want to be somewhere where, you know, you, you like the system, you like what's going on, you like what they're doing. And I mean, I don't know all the intricacies of coaching contracts and all that stuff. You know, you hear stuff. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know the coaching contracts like i don't i mean i've seen stuff and it's like oh okay well like matt patricia okay well if they hire him as a defense offensive coordinator they have to pay him but if he's not the offensive coordinator the lines still have to pay him okay well like it's just all types of stuff right so but as a coach i don't see a negative to any one of those guys signing extensions just because they sign an extension don't mean they can't take a head coaching job next year. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why, as a coach, why not sign contracts? I get it. From a player standpoint, you sign contracts. Now they want to keep you in your deal, right? Now you're stuck. From a coaching standpoint, maybe and, and maybe it's like, well, you just signed an extension. We're not going to grant you, you know, permission to interview for other jobs or this and this and that. But that just looks bad at on organizations when you got a good young up and coming defensive coordinator they got an opportunity or offensive coordinator they got an opportunity to be a head coach and you're hating like nah nah you can't go interview like really so you very rarely see that and so from a coach's standpoint it doesn't it doesn't hurt you to in my opinion to take those take those things like you look at you know D'Amico Ryan's right why not take a six-year coaching deal to coach the Texans? Like, if it works out, great. If it don't work out, 
hey, man, I'm pretty sure you can go back and be a defensive coordinator somewhere. And you got six years of contract money. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I don't see I don't see any negative from coaches signing extensions. You're happy that they, they got that and the Lions felt that type of way about them. And, you know, hopefully they show some type of loyalty in, in situations like that. You know, you don't see a, a situation like an Eric B. Enemy where, you know, he leaves for – I mean, he's still the offensive coordinator. We may got a little more power. He may be calling the plays or all that stuff. And, and like I say, I don't even know all that stuff. I, do Andy Reid call the plays? Do Eric B. Like, who knows, man? Like, the people inside the organization, people inside the building know what each person brings to the table. It just is what it is, regardless of who's calling the plays and who's got the title. That stuff doesn't matter. The people inside the building understand and know. And so, you know, for him to feel like, you know, I have to leave, to maybe get the respect or the credit that I feel like I deserve, then that's what he did. So that's why you will see somebody take the same position. Maybe he's an assistant head coach or something. I think I saw um, for the commanders, but it's probably just, I need to try to show that I'm, I'm a good coordinator as well, because my success gets watered down because of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes being who they are. Right. So, the lines hopefully trying to prevent something like that, you know, Hey man, we'll, we'll, we'll pay you guys like what you want. Like, don't, don't go to Minnesota and take a defensive coordinated job or offensive coordinated job. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we want you here. We'll take care of you here. Um, but if you got an opportunity to go be a head coach, I mean, we're not going to stop you from going to be a head coach. And that's, I always like the expression, never hold a good employee back, never hold a good worker back. And that's something the lines are absolutely not doing. They're saying, Hey, Go out there, go interview, see what's best for you. And if you decide that Detroit is best for you, we will make it worth your while because we believe in you. We believe you deserve it. And unfortunately, there are some coaches that are leaving. Deuce Staley, running back coach and assistant head coach. He's heading to Carolina. He wants to be close to his mom uh, in Carolina. And so no hard feelings, no fault there. You've got family always comes first before career. So much love, much respect for Deuce Staley. Todd Wash, the defensive line coach, he's also joining Staley with the Carolina Panthers. I haven't heard a specific reason why, but at the same time, hey, he did some great things for the Detroit Lions, and if his heart is in Carolina, I'm not going to hold him back. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm just going to root for him to have success there because he treated us so well. 2022 is over, which you're probably thinking means fantasy football is over and done with. Well, thanks to Player Profiler, fantasy football matters year-round. Go to playerprofiler.com right now, and you can sign up for the all-in package, which gets you access to the world-famous draft kit, talking about all the football players that will be scoring your points in 2023 fantasy leagues with the world-famous draft kit, courtesy of playerprofiler.com. We also have the player rankings, both dynasty and regular season. So no matter what your league is, playerprofiler.com has customizable rankings to help you win your championship this year. And with the dynasty deluxe package gives you everything you need to know about dynasty football. So if you want to run your team like a franchise year after year winning championships, you can do it right now with playerprofiler.com. And if you sign up for the all in package, January is completely free. Whole month, rest of the month, through the playoffs, free. Sign up now with playerprofiler.com. Twenty twenty two is over, so you're probably thinking fantasy football. That's over. That's done with. Well, thanks to our friends over at playerprofiler.com, that's not true. Because with the all-in package from playerprofiler.com, you get your Dynasty fix with the Dynasty Deluxe, giving you all the rankings that you need, all the information on all the players coming in the 2023 draft. Also, when it comes to regular season and redraft, playerprofiler.com has everything you need there with the world-famous draft kit, breaking down all the players that are going to be scoring points, bringing you a fantasy football championship. So sign up for the all-in package with playerprofiler.com. You even get the... (sighs) 
2022 is over. So you're probably thinking fantasy football, that's over, that's done with until August. Well, thanks to our friends over at playerprofiler.com, that is no longer true. Because with the all-in package, you get access to the Dynasty Deluxe, helping you run your fantasy team like an actual franchise. Playerprofiler.com also bringing us the world-famous draft kit, breaking down... Twenty twenty three is twenty twenty two is over. So you're probably thinking fantasy football. That's over. That's done with. Not going to bother with that until August. Well, that's no longer true. Thanks to our friends over at PlayerProfiler.com, because with the all in package, you will get access to the Dynasty Deluxe, which brings you all you need to know for Dynasty Fantasy Football to run your fantasy team like an actual NFL team. And it'll give you all the information you could possibly want on this upcoming crop of rookies in the 2023 class. It'll also give you the DFS Dominator. So during the season, you can bet on all sorts of players and win some money. Thanks to our friends over at playerprofiler.com. Also gives you the data analysis tool, the draft kit, Twenty twenty two is over, so you're probably thinking fantasy football. That's over. That's done with. Not going to bother with that until August at the earliest. Well, thanks to our friends over at PlayerProfiler.com, that is no longer the case because they've got the Dynasty Deluxe, which means you can get all of the Dynasty information. Twenty twenty two is over. So you're probably thinking fantasy football. That's over. That's done with. Not going to even bother with that until August. Well, thanks to our friends over at PlayerProfiler.com, that is no longer the case. With PlayerProfiler.com, the all-in package. If you sign up today, you'll get the Dynasty Deluxe, which gives you everything you need to know to start up your own Dynasty Fantasy Football League, run your fantasy team like an actual franchise, and. It also lets you know all these rookies that are coming into the NFL draft. It'll, the all-in package, the Dynasty Deluxe with PlayerProfiler.com gives you everything you need to know for the 2023 draft. And then after that, the world-famous draft kit will be coming out, which gives you everything you need to know for the 2023 NFL season. Gives you all the juicy fantasy information that you could possibly want. And then when the regular season starts, there's the DFS Dominator, which helps you win some money during the season by knowing who's going to dominate. Sign up today for the all-in package with our friends over at playerprofiler.com and get ahead of the 2023 season for fantasy football, and you'll get the rest of January totally free. Sign up now, playerprofiler.com. Yeah, I mean, you know, you like I say, Family's gonna come first, and and like I said, it's all about the relationships. You know, what I'm saying when you leaving for for good reasons on good terms, you know, something happens and you end up right back, right? I mean, you look at what just happened with uh with my guy Vance Joseph, right? He was a head coach in in Denver. You know, he gets fired. It is what it is, but he must have left with decent terms with the with the upper echelon because now he's back. Yeah, the coach is different, but the upper brass is still the same, right? But they felt good enough about him as a coach, as a player, and and whatever to say, hey, yeah, you can have him as your defensive coordinator, you know. You so do Staley. I'm I'm sure he's still in great graces with those guys. You know, he's going home to be closer to his mom, and everybody respects you for that type of stuff, you know. And so, I don't think that's a bad thing, and. I mean, you know, these 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 people are human, man. Everybody, we're, we're all human. I know we do some superhuman things sometimes, and, and you see us in a different way, but we're, we're all human. We all have feelings. We all got, you know, hopefully parents or, you know, siblings or, you know, family members, wives, kids that have things that come up. And, you know, we miss out on a lot of those things or, 
are not around for all those things because of the job. And so when you have an opportunity and when you've put yourself in a position of power to be able to say, hey, man, like, I want to be closer to my mom. Like, let me see if I can get this Carolina job and and be able to get that to where now you can still coach football, but you're closer to your mom who, you know, I mean, do studies an older guy. He's older than me. So I mean, I'm sure his, his mom is older, probably, you know, probably older than my parents. Right. So um, to want to do that, like that, that's admirable. And I think, you know, he, guys respect that. And, and, you know, it's glad it's good that, you're allowed to be able to do those things. Exactly. And you can be disappointed on a personal level. Like, oh man, I'm really going to miss Deuce Staley. I loved having him around, but you are happy for him that he is pursuing what he wants in his life, pursuing his goals. And it's a business at the end of the day, it is a business and people are going to move on. You're going to work with different people and you just have to accept that. Keep rooting for the people that treat you well to continue to have success, which Vance Joseph, perfect example. The fact that he can come back and it's not a worry uh, because a lot of head coaches would be like, well, he was the former head coach. He's probably gunning for my job still. There's no egos like that. It's just something beautiful to see. Yeah, but I mean, you also got to look at who's heading the ship. Like Sean Payton has a resume. Like (laughs) he he, eagles don't worry about the the, the birds (laughs) flying underneath them, man. Like it just is what it is. Like I'm Sean Payton. Like I'm not worried about Vance Joseph coming for my job. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I'm Sean Payton. Now, if Vance was the head coach and Sean Payton was the offensive coordinator, he now you see what I'm saying? Like okay, well Sean could be trying to, or Sean may get because of his resume. But like Sean's the head coach. Like bro, they gave up all these first round picks and this and that to bring you here. Like you're the guy. You're the guy. He's not work at all. No, no. And he shouldn't be, but it's just nice. It's nice to see the relationships work out like that. And it's also nice to see that the lions are continuing a trend of hiring former players. They hired Steve Hyden to coach the tight ends was an 11 year veteran with the chargers and the Browns actually drafted 10 spots ahead of Dan Campbell in that 1990 draft. And then even more exciting, another player drafted in that 1990 draft alongside Dan Campbell, second round pick Dre Bly, two pro bowls with the Detroit lions. I am pumped that he is going to be coaching for the lions. He coached with Dan Campbell as an intern with the new Orleans saints. And he played alongside Dan Campbell with the lions in 2006 Glover. I know you were pumped about this signing. What can you tell me about Dre Bly and him being a, a cornerback coach for the Detroit Lions? Well, I was excited about it because, for one, I, I love the fact, like you said, that they're, they're 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 getting former players, you know. And the thing about former players is, just because you're a great player, don't mean you're going to be a great coach, right? And so I said this about Dre when I uh, when I talked about it the other week is. He was a great player, ball hawk, and I love him being able to hopefully bring that to the line secondary. The mentality, the attitude, the swagger, the 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 thing that made him great, right? Um, because you know, outside of Kirby Joseph last year, you know, we didn't really have ball hawks in the secondary. So maybe he can spot some of those guys in the draft process and free agency and say, "Hey, man." This right here is a good player for us. He's a great player here, and he could be a ball hawk for us because we need to get the ball. We have to turn the ball over. It's just way too hard to win games in all these times without being able to generate more possessions for the offense. So hopefully he can bring that to them. Like I say, the thing about being a former player is, you know, you have to be able to teach the guys and not expect them to know all the time. And I think if he can have that connection with them and teach them how to do stuff, because a lot of a lot of these players don't know. And it's sad. And you say, how did in the NFL they don't know? They don't know. A lot of them don't know. They're just playing. Some of them know, but a lot of them don't know. So to be able to teach them so they can understand it is is a great thing. And so the the relationship that he has with Dan Campbell. The relationship that he has with the city, 
the relationship that he has with Dre, I mean, with Aaron Glenn. I think they were all in New Orleans together. I think I remember seeing Dre on the sideline a couple times, you know, when while AG was there as a defensive backs coach, I think, in uh in New Orleans. So they all got relationship and that and that makes it that makes it good because you gotta be able to have when you have a relationship with guys, you can have real conversations and still go out and have a drink afterwards, right? Because you know, hey man, this guy got my back. We don't been through it all. We don't always see eye to eye. We may not always agree on everything, but I know he's got my best interest and I got his best interest and we're just trying to win games and put the best product out there. So I was happy to see that. And like I said, just a former player, um, guys getting into coaching, you know what I'm saying? Staying around the game, being able to impart knowledge on the younger, uh, on the younger guys and just help those guys be better. So I was excited for Dre, man. And, I'm, I, and like I said, I hope he can bring that swagger that he played with the ball hawking, the, the turnovers and the, the IQ and all those things that, you know, made him a great player. I hope he can uh, impart that into his guys. I really liked what you said about players not knowing and how could that happen? Mike Wall, friend of the show on the On My Black On My Block podcast with the uh, Believe Network Green Bay Packers podcast, played guard for the Packers. He's big into the player development and the skills development. The one point that he made was you get multiple different guys coming in and telling you how to do a tech different techniques because that's what they do. And so you're not taught, well, this is why we do it. This is the most effective movement. And so you're almost left, well, this is what one coach said, and this is what the other coach said. I like this guy, what he was saying, but this is my coach now. And it just leads to confusion and overlap of techniques. And a lot of the time, guys truly don't know what they're doing or the best way to press or the best when should I line up outside shade here, inside shade? And so it's really interesting hearing you say that, but at the same time, it's so true that guys just generally don't know. Yeah, I mean, and everybody does things different. You don't have to, you know, do everything the same exact way. One guy may, you know, edit his podcast videos in this you know, software. Another guy may do it this way. One guy may say, yeah, I just upload all this stuff and I do it like this. One guy says, well, I clip mine and do it like this. You're you're all doing, getting to the same point. You're just going a different way about it. So if you get a new person and you're teaching them, you're going to teach them your way of how to do things, right? You're going to, the best coaches, in my opinion, can understand what you know, right? So I would say, okay, well, what have you been doing what what you know, what program do you work with okay okay tell me about it why why do you like doing that explain i'm a why person right explain to me why you like doing that does that make you feel comfortable that this and this and that okay well if i can help you then i'm gonna say oh well i think i can do some things to to help you if i feel like what you're doing man that seems better than what i'm doing I may say, you know what, I need to try that from a editing standpoint because I generally do this, 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 and that, and that seems so much easier. So it's about getting to know people, getting to understand why they do something, and, and that's the biggest thing for me when it comes to teaching. I always tell my kids, I don't want to just tell you what to do. I want to tell you why you're doing it so then you can apply that in whatever situation that you need to apply it to. If I just tell you what to do, you're only going to do that in that situation because you don't know why you're doing it. So always figure out why you're doing something. So as a coach, don't just tell your players what to do. Explain to them why we are doing certain things, why they should be doing certain things. And that'll help them learn. It's going to help you in the long run. It's going to help them be better players. And if you can't explain the why you're doing what you're doing, do you really understand what you're doing? If you can't teach someone else without just saying, well, we do it because we do it. Do you really get it? Right. You don't. You no. don't. And, you know, I think everybody should be not saying it in the, I tell people this all the time. I'm not saying this in a, you know, in a negative way or, uh, you know, arrogant. I just want to understand why I'm doing something like, yeah, like, I don't have a problem doing it. Just tell me why am I doing like, you know what I'm saying? Like what, what am I doing this for? Oh, okay, cool. I got it now. I understand it. Cool. Or bro, that really don't make sense. Like, 
are we really doing all that for this? Is, is that is, the best use of our time? Isn't there that an make easier sense? way? Right. Is there something else that we could do if we're doing it for that? Right? Kind of how I look at it. I completely agree. Completely agree. It it communication is so key. We are no longer in a generation, an era where you can just say, do it because I said so. Because a lot of the time, that style, they're wrong. We saw it with Urban Meyer. He right. didn't know what he was doing. People who can't explain, can't teach, it's it's tough to build that way because then people you, you're just creating robots essentially. Right. Man, you and you don't want that. You want people to be able to think because the game moves so fast and things happen in the game that you have to be problem solvers. You know, the coach is not gonna always be able to tell you exactly what to do, when to do it. You have to be able to ex assess a situation and problem solve and if you can't do that it makes it very difficult so if you know why you are doing something you know it's like having you know we always talk about tools in your toolbox right you know you can play it this way you can play it that way you can play it this way you can play it that way you just put in different tools in your toolbox you have to know when to pull the right tool out you don't want to pull out your hammer when you need your screwdriver, right? You don't want to pull out this when you need that. You need to know, but you need to know why you're using a screwdriver and why you're using a drill, right? You can get the same thing done. This one, you might need the screwdriver though. This one, you might need the drill. And if you're trying to use the drill when you need the screwdriver, probably not going to get it done. When you need this, drill and you're trying to use the screwdriver probably going to take you a little longer right so you you just got the tools in your toolbox you need to know why you have them how you use them when you will use them why you will want to use them right so now i understand the tools in my toolbox so then when i go to a job i can look at it and say hmm I'm probably going to need this. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that. And you go and get those tools out of the toolbox to help you get that job done. It's the same way on the field. It's got this, got this, got that. Hmm, this situation, I probably need to do this so I can get the job done. And you got to understand your different tools because if you don't understand your tools and coach just told you, hey, 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 you got two guys over there. You should go and press this guy. Well, you're going to go do that every time because you, I got two guys over here. I'm going to press. Well, you don't need to press them this time. Why not? You haven't taught me. You didn't tell me why I should be pressing him with two guys over there. Right? Because they might put three guys over there, but they got the same scenario, and I can see it. So it's like, bro, it's three guys over here, but they're just trying to hide what they're trying to do. It's really these two guys that they're trying to, you know, and you got to be able to see that and digest that and get that out there. But you got to understand what you're doing. So guys got to be able to teach. And if you can teach and be a great teacher, you can you can help players become great players. And that's why it's so key in collecting coaches that can teach, that can actually impart the why. It's also important to get players that can do that as well. You have player coaches. I know you were very much a player coach on the field for the Detroit Lions for years. And We've got a couple of free agents or potential free agents that sure know a lot. We got Bobby Wagner, who just got released by the Los Angeles Rams, and Jalen Ramsey, who could be traded. He's not going to get cut, as he tweeted out, but Jalen Ramsey might not be a Ram by the end of the, the offseason as well. Are those the kinds of players that the Lions should be pursuing, or is that a little bit too up there in terms of price and everything? Well, I mean, I think from a perspective of what the Lions team needs, I think those would be great fits, right? Bobby Wagner, yeah, he's an older guy, but he's still very productive in his league. He's been a great player in his league for a long time. And you got some young linebackers that they can learn from, right? The one thing that I've been saying about the Lions defense is they got a bunch of great young players. They need older veterans that can teach them the way. Right. So you look at a Bobby Wagner. Yeah, he may not 
be what he used to be. And he may still be very productive. I mean, he's still, I mean, I thought he had a good season last year, right? Um, but he can teach your your young linebackers how to play the game. He can teach them, you know, how to maintain in this league for 10 years, right? You look at a guy like Jalen Ramsey. Obviously, he's a big time ball player and a playmaker, but you know, having young corners and young safeties bringing in somebody, you know, like that could help them. But the thing about Jalen Ramsey to me, and this just could be me, and I don't know Jalen Ramsey personally. I know him as a player. The thing that you have to be careful of when you when you think about players of that caliber is is the stage, is the challenge, and is the surrounding people big enough for him, right? He's a big-time player, big-time person in the NFL ranks, right? So when you look at the lines, is there anybody – on the team that he would feel like I got to listen to this guy or would he feel like I'm the big guy in the locker room, right? He may feel like he's bigger than Jared Goff, right? Like I felt like I was a pretty big guy on our squad, but if Stafford said, Hey, we ain't going out today. I ain't going out. This is what it is. If I said we're not going out, and Stafford was like, nah, bro, we need to go out. The nine times out of ten, the people on the team, they're going out. If Stafford say, let's go out. Now, I might have my homies that be like, nah, GQ said we ain't going, we ain't going. But the overall team, Stafford was like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you look at the secondary, who in the secondary is going to elevate Jalen, like push him to be better? Or is he going to have the attitude of like, yeah, I'm – I'm the guy here. I'm the, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, and like I said, I don't know him personally. That may be his personality and he just want to work and get better and bring the people along. And I will hope that that's how he is, but I don't know that. So those are things that you got to look for with a player like Jalen, who's in the middle of his prime, basically still playing at a high level. Um, and you're bringing him to Detroit, right? This guy that's been playing on high stages, been in LA, like, He's he's going to be, you know, an OBJ type product, you know what I'm saying? Big time type of person. Bobby Wagner seems more he's big time, but he seems more low key chill. He's not as big in the media stuff. You don't see him out as much as you will see. a You know what I'm saying? And so he may be one of those guys that can come in. You know, he came up the hard way, went to Utah State. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he may be one of those guys that don't mind you know, for the right price, going to a Detroit and, you know, playing some good football and helping get them over the hump because that's what people don't understand when you talk about legacy and stuff like that. Like, you go to Detroit right now, they're already on the cusp. You go there and be that piece that they need to get to, you know, the playoffs and get to an NFC championship game and have an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. Like, they crediting you. Like Bobby Wagner was the guy that came in and and helped this deep solidify this defense, and they were able to get some key stops and key situations, and now they're a playoff team. Or Jalen Ramsey really solidified that secondary, and those guys are playing at a high level. Him and Dre Bly, and you know they just upgraded, and now look at this team. Well, they're already on the cusp of the playoffs, but that's just how people look at it. So you know it's very not it's, it's really not a bad destination. For a lot of players, you just got to make sure you get the right fit for your team and what you're trying to build. And that is always the key at the end of the day is the fit, how everything works. And given the Rams connections, I, I'm i confident that Brad Holmes will know how the fit will work, whether it's good right. or bad. Whatever decision Brad Holmes makes on these Rams players, I know he wasn't with Bobby Wagner in L.A., but he's got the inside scoop. I trust Brad Holmes based on the intel that he's going to get. Lions are going to have a fair amount of money to spend, though. They have apparently agreed with Michael Brockers that they will part ways that will save $10 million in cap. We all remember Michael Brockers, team captain, healthy scratch for most of the season, at least towards the end. 
which was unfortunate, but they liked him in his leadership role enough that they respected him, kept him on the team. Parting ways, they'll have $23 million in cap, 10th in the NFL. So they've got some money to throw around, but they got a lot of free agents that they got to take care of in-house. They got Shark, they got Jamal Williams, who I can't see going anywhere after breaking the record, but you never know. Someone could throw him the bag. Evan Brown, those are the three big ones on offense. And then on defense, Deshaun Elliott's a free agent. Alex Anzalone's a free agent. John Kaminsky's a free agent. Isaiah Bugs and Will Harris. So they've got money, but you still got to take care of your people. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, when you look at all those guys, I mean, I understand that they have a bunch of free agents, but none of those guys are going to require, you know, top dollar. Just, just is what it is. I mean, even though Jamal had the record and broke – like, I don't think there's going to be a team that's going to look at Jamal and say, okay, we're going to give you $15 million a year. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you scored a lot of touchdowns. Not saying you were, you know, a productive back all season and running hard through the tackles, but, you know, pushing the ball in from, you know, inside the five, you know, I'm not taking anything away from that. But that those were the opportunities, right? They're going to be, like I said, they're going to be evaluating, okay, well, how many – you know, 10 plus yard runs did he have? How many 20 plus yard runs? Is he a back that we can look at out the backfield? How, you know, how is he? Is he, is he a pass catcher? Can he pass block? Like, the, they're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And when, when they say, you know, we want to give you this much money, right? Um, but he deserves to get some money. He's been in the league for a while. I've been doing this thing. I remember playing against him back in Green Bay. So, um, you know, he'll get paid. But like I said, none of those guys, I don't think DJ Chark, you know, done anything this year to to warrant him getting that much money. Obviously, he's be a free agent, so he'll get some money, right? But I don't think he will require ten million dollars a year. Um, you know, Alex Anzalone, John Come. Like I, I think all those guys are really good players, pieces, deserve to get money. So if they don't get what they deserve in Detroit, yeah, you gotta part ways with some of those guys. But I don't think none of those guys are going to be, you know, in the top 10, 15 of like their position money wise. So they shouldn't be able to resign a lot of those guys, even if they're on just smaller deals. Like, hey, I just want to take a one or two year deal, you know, for a little bit to continue to grow and, you know, hopefully hit a big payday in two years. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they're going to have to spend some money to add one or two like big time pieces they're gonna have to they they, they need they need a guy in the secondary like yeah. i said even if it's just a leadership role type of guy um they need they need somebody that you know to couple with Dre Bly, and then you get a good player that can that can help lead them and 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 teach them and then if you can get a bobby wagner that that's a big time move for for your defense it is. And there, there are a lot of different moves that the Lions can make. Deron Payne was one that people were hyping up the nose tackle from the commander. Sounds like he's going to get franchise tag, but there's still so many options out there. So many different ways to get creative and add some stars. And I can't wait to see what happens. Final question I want to ask you before we get you out of here, Glover. It's not about the Lions. It's about the draft process and really how unfair it can be at some times because Jalen Carter, by all accounts, he is the, if not one of the top players in the draft, could go 101. He's going in the top five, it sounds like. And we hear on the national championship, we get Todd McShay talking about, well, he's got character issues. You know what he's like in the locker room and, and dealing with that. And then this week it comes out that Jalen Carter started a tradition with the Georgia Bulldogs that if you are a scholarship athlete and you're getting some NIL money, you are going to start paying for your brothers on the team's meals because they don't get their meals for free if they're a non-scholarship athlete. So you hear that where he's completely changed the culture for the better, where it's making the team a more of a family and then just the random character issues thrown out there. And it just it feels unfair, and I know this happens all the time. But what are your thoughts on the the whispers that never really get substantiated? That oh, this guy's a problem. Well, a lot of times it'd be like that. Honestly, when you think about a lot of players, some of the players with character issues are some of the best teammates. Actually, you know what I'm saying. 
And it's, it's just something about them that they have a different love and care for, like, their teammates. But they don't have that same love and care for themselves, it seems like. You know what I'm saying? Because they'll go out of their way for their teammates. And sometimes people do that to cover up some of their character issues, right? But they'll go out of their way. They'll be the nicest. They'll give you their shirt if they have to. You know what I'm saying? But somebody outside of that circle, they don't feel that same way. They generally probably have like trust issues or different things where like these people right here, these are my brothers and I do whatever I can for them. But these people, I don't like them. I don't feel this way. And, you know, I, I speak my mouth. I speak my I say what I got to say. And, you know, when you are a football player, you're probably bigger than the average person. Um, I honestly don't know Jaden Carter. Who Who is he from? From D tackle from Georgia. All right. So you're D tackle. So I'm pretty sure you're a big guy. Right. So anytime you say something out of anything as a big type of guy is going to get taken completely. Possibly out of, you know, what I'm saying whatever, just because you're big. Um, so I don't know what character issues that they're saying, but I do know that. The people in the in, in the organization, the teams the teammates, all those people will have firsthand knowledge as to who he is, how he is, and they'll be able to evaluate all those things, right? I mean, you look at a Tyreek Hill, he had issues coming out. They were this and that with him, and he hasn't had any problems in the NFL that I know of. He's been a good football player, great football player, you know, won a Super Bowl, got a big contract, go to Miami, leading receiver, Pro Bowls, all these different things. But I think he has some character issues coming out. So you also got to look at what the character issue was. Like, when did it happen? At what point in these kids' lives? People change. People grow. People mature. Things that bothers you as an 18-year-old kid may not bother you anymore as a 24-year-old kid. Maybe you've gotten some help. You've overcame those traumas and dramas and things that that bothers you and made you speak out and, and, and act out in certain ways. Maybe you see a different life for yourself now that you are in college and you're playing ball and you got a chance to go to the NFL. When I had those character issues, I didn't know what my life was going to be like. So I was scared. And so I acted out. It's so many different things that go into all that stuff. And that's why they evaluate. That's why you can't just write a kid off because he made a mistake. I mean, we're all human. We've all done crazy things. We've all made mistakes. Some, some of them that they know about, some of them that they don't know about. But if they investigate every single person to the bottom of the core, you will find something about every single person. Well, this may not be as bad as the next or this and this and that, but we're all human. We all do stuff that could be seen that way. And so I think that's what the thing is that they'll do a great job of, you know, interviewing him, talking to the people around him. Um and if he really got character issues, they'll come out and it'll be known. And if he really don't, and then sometimes it's like, hey, what are the issues? Are, are, are your Is your play good enough to overcome the worst of your issues, right? Like, you know, do we got to deal with you being outspoken, but you're going to be a great player? Eh, we might can deal with that for a little bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have to worry about you drinking and driving. We don't have to worry about you domestic. We don't have to worry about you. We just got to worry about you being not spoken. Hmm. You know, so I'm trying to get into all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm a player and I'm always trying to try to have my players back. And so I, I, I trust the NFL and then, and these teams and they do do due diligence on all these guys. And they'll know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that know him personally. You play for a Georgia team. They they got plenty of connects to the NFL. So um if he got character issues, we'll know. And if he's and if it's not, then it won't it won't affect him. That's good. And that's kind of what I was hoping to hear. Cause you just hear that blanket statement get tossed around. No context, no explanation. We don't know what the issues are. And like you said, maybe he's outspoken. Well, what kind of outspoken is, is he, is he the kind of outspoken where he's defending people and he gets loud or is he, and that's taken as aggressive. You know what I mean? There's just, there's so many different types of people. And as you said, He's a large man. Of course, everything he says is going to come off as more aggressive. So if it's right, he's outspoken. 
it's just I just wish we would get a little bit more instead of just being able to throw character issue, end of conversation, move on. It's like what, what, you can't just do that to this young man. He's he, that's that's not fair to him. Right, I'm finna, and I don't even know how to spell his name, but I'm just finna Google him and see what comes up. I mean, they're looking at his men, the number one pick. Jalen Carter, J A L E N, and then Carter. Right, they they got him as possibly been a number one pick for the Chicago Bears. Yep. I mean, I don't see any, I don't see any bad headlines. Nope. And that's why everyone's so surprised when it comes out. He has character issues, but the only headline off the field is that he bought lunches for teammates and paid for their meals. Something doesn't add up. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad to get your take on it, though. That's what I wanted was like an actual player's opinion, because we hear so many times, like you said, Tyron Matthew had character issues. Right. Steve Smith had character issues because he was talking to like, it's... I mean, I mean, Tyron didn't even get to play his last year because he was kicked out of football for issues. And he's been an outstanding citizen in the NFL. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. Hey, yeah. man, things happen in people's lives, man. And, you know, you have things that people deal with. And sometimes you just get in a bad situation and you're on the wrong end of it. Don't mean you're a bad person. And then all of a sudden you get positive things going in your life. You get positive people around you. You see, you know, a life in a different different spectrum. And those things that you used to do, you you stay away from those things. And. That don't mean Tyran Matthew lives a perfect life right now, but he's been in the league for a lot of years, and I don't know of anything egregious that we've heard. I mean, he hasn't been suspended for a whole season that I know of. So this is this is what I was hoping to hear, Jess. It's nice to get the player's perspective of this because you've been through it, you've went through this draft cycle, you've had friends and colleagues and everyone where you've heard all the different stories coming into the league and it's nice to hear that at the end of the day probably not going to matter unless it's actually serious but what Todd McShay and other draft analysts have to say of the leaving it blank doesn't really matter no nah, don't matter perfect but what matters is Glover Quinn and believe in Lions. I am so happy I get to talk to you. Pleasure as always. Any final thoughts that you want to leave the people with here today? Man, enjoy the offseason. Watch some basketball, man. It's rodeo time in Houston, man. If you're in the I saw you got Houston some area. boots. Oh, yeah. I had to get me some more boots. I'm finna get dressed up right now. Ooh. <laughs> Trying to go to the cookout tonight. See, see what's going on, man. Ooh, so ooh. Yeah, man, it's rodeo time. It's it's a Houston thing, man. You, I mean, if you're ever in this area around this time, you got to check out the rodeo. It's it's a pretty cool deal, man. And you know, and I and, I, and like I I love talent. I yeah. love like talent, and so because I think being a pro, I understand what it takes to play at the highest level, right? So when you see some of these cowboys and cowgirls and the way they freaking ride those horses and roping cows and jumping off and steering and flipping and knit. you're just like bro that like those animals are powerful man like they riding a bull like those things are powerful bro and you see some of those things they get what man and so to me, I can have a huge respect for those guys, man, and those people. And I just love to watch them perform, man. I just love to watch it. It's just motivating to me to, like, man, you can really be anything in this world that you want to be. You just got to be willing to put the time and effort and energy into doing it. And they've obviously done that. And it's a pleasure for me to get to watch it. Talent, athleticism, just anyone at the peak of their profession is just – so cool to watch. It's why I'm so lucky to get to talk to you. Peak of your profession as a football player, peak of your fr- profession as a podcaster, and as a framer. So I am just <laughs> happy that you feel the same way, honoring other people that are in your stratosphere in different different types of uh, events. 
I love it, man. I love it. I love. And if you just, I mean, if you watch people that are really good at what they do, man, like how does that not inspire you? And it's anything like anybody that's really good at what they do, like an artist that just can paint so beautiful or like somebody that's so musically talented, like just watching LeBron, like anybody that's really just good at what they do. Like, how does that not inspire you? Like, bro. Cause see, most people think they just woke up like that. No, man, they just worked really hard. I'm not saying they didn't have some talent, but they just worked really hard, man. So if you just work really hard at whatever your talent is, you can be just like that. Just like that. And so that's what inspires me. That's what gets me going. That's what keeps me going. That's what I love. And so, yeah, man. Go out there, enjoy some talent because people deserve to have their talents acknowledged and you deserve to get to experience their talent as well. So until then, we will see you next time. Peace.